U.S. Army has deployed Lockheed Martin's high-energy laser weapons in active combat zones, targeting enemy drones and projectiles. This system offers a low-cost-per-shot alternative to traditional missile interceptors, reducing the reliance on expensive munitions. The challenge here is atmospheric interference, dust, rain, fog, uh, that can clear... I guess, or reduce laser accuracy, my understanding of it, requiring mm -hmm. constant refinements in those tracking alg algorithms. Early feedback from this is suggesting that deployment uh, of the lasers has successfully neutralized drone threats, but do require further testing against larger missile targets. Yeah, the, the, the challenge on this one is going to be, as you've just kind of suggested, it's operational readiness and reliability mm -hmm. for that matter. Because if that system doesn't perform consistently in real world conditions it's just never going to scale it's never going to get to really used so no matter how cost effective it sounds um, and how advanced the technology sounds how cool it is if it doesn't work when there's a bit of dust and it's raining it's a bit like driving in california when it rains we don't go out we just don't do anything we freeze in space it could be the same with a laser weapon fog as well i don't like to go out in fog either it creates unpredictability, which is unacceptable for military applications. So that's it for me. Operational now, readiness, reliability. What you got, Brian? I mean, of course, operational readiness is. Oh, dear. You weren't operationally ready. Readiness. Of course, operational readiness is important. But let's look at the real number one problem. <laughs> Scaling. See, oh, you can. You, you, you say that it can't scale without performing. It doesn't training. work. I say it doesn't work. Boring. No, it's going to ten of them. Because <laughs> they've, they've done the test. They're in the testing process. They're going to make sure that it works. They're going to need to scale this with quality. They're going to have to mount them to the striker, mortar, carrier, double, V-hole, A1s. And the Hilux. Uh, these things are 50 kilowatt spectrum beam combined lasers. It's a non-kinetic alternative. uses a liquid or sorry, lithium nickel cobalt aluminum oxide batteries that are recharged by onboard diesel generators, which means we can have continuous operation in combat scenarios. If I'm on a field, I want one of these things just pew, 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 no jamming, no reloading, just Star Wars. And they need a lot of them. So I'm saying you got to do it at scale. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, we can the stop right there. oxide batteries are amazing. Uh, continuous operation until April when it starts to rain. The tests they're doing are proving it can work. <laughs> They've got to validate for me the number one solution to my problem, which is the number one problem, let's be blunt, it's product validation and simulation. We've got our cool designs. We can, pro I mean, if you bring us along, we'll get you manufacturing at scale fixed, no problem at all. But I want to make sure you've really validated, really simulated it. So to me, to fix operational readiness and reliability, product validation, simulation, that's it. Well, yeah. Andrew's out there worrying about the tests that are already happening. I'm going to be worrying about my target practice and having a blast. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. The other thing I think you do need on this to make sure it's really good for all conditions is the AI driven modeling, which really is part of simulation, but less algorithm based, more machine learning based. So you're constantly evolving the AI driven modeling. So I think that uh, is part of the solution. Then you've got higher reliability, more deployments, more revenue. Mm. Everyone's a winner, and except the person on the receiving end. Well, right. Yeah, the receiving end could not be fantastic. Unless it's cloudy. It's, it's cloudy with a chance of meatballs or lasers. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just hope that they've improved the accuracy since May 25th, 1977. <laughs> have you seen what did they have? That, that uh, they have actually like been purposely missing because because if you look at some of the more other shots, they could actually shoot things. And so it became Disney canon that they weren't accurate off of a meme. It's a whole nother discussion. We'll save that. For yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll save that for the after show. I'm loading it up on my Hilux any day now. I feel it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See you next one.